if you're like me once upon a time i was confused too between what's the difference between a land cruiser and a land cruiser prado <laughs> yeah uh basically land the land cruiser is a totally separate vehicle the land cruiser prado or it's a lexus gx in america it basically shares the same platform as the fortuner hilux and fj cruiser uh, how do we know this? Because the Land Cruiser Prado, as far as the Philippines goes, has been sold in a few variants. There is the 3-liter variant, which has the same engine as the Fortune, and then it also comes with a V6, which is the same engine as the FJ Cruiser. And then all bolts in, so that means the chassis is the same, suspension is pretty much the same. Uh, this has disc brakes all around, the Fortune has drum brakes at the back, the FJ Cruiser also has disc brakes all around. So pretty much the Land Cruiser Prado V6 is a nicer softer more luxurious fortuner and a nicer more luxurious fj cruiser uh, usually these things are almost always four-wheel drive also so full time four uh, which the fj isn't and uh, first generation three liter fortuner is also a full time four so as you can see here on the dyno we have all four wheels on the pod so yes this is a full time four wheel drive and there is no selectable switch for two wheel drive four wheel drive uh, this happens to be an older 2012-2013 V6 Prado and then, uh, well, the usual complaints. Uh, need more power, guzzles gas like crazy, there's delay in the throttle, picks up, pickup is really slow. So that's what we're going to be doing with the remap here. Let's open up the hood so we can see what the engine is. And there it is. Yes, it is exactly the same engine as the fj cruiser it's a four liter v6 and this engine is also found in the u.s spec toyota tacoma uh, which we don't get here um, americans don't really get diesel pickups they all get either v6 or for the mid-size pickups and v8 for the full-size pickup there's an even bigger brother for the Toyota pickup, which is the Tundra, which is available in America, not available here. And of course, the big F-150. Uh, there's a Ranger in America that has a EcoSport V6 also. <laughs> yeah, so again, same engine. Uh, four full-time four-wheel drive. Yes, we can remap it. Uh, but see the thing, the later generation ones uh, that still come with the V6, meaning 2020, 21 and up, uh, chances are, as far as... There's probably not a remap for that one uh, because, well, the guys who, have, who do supply the maps for Toyota haven't got around doing it either. Number one, they don't do bother doing it anymore because it's not really a very, very popular selling model. Even in other countries, the diesel is the one that sells a lot more. So for that, we have only one option, which is Unichip. So again, if you have a V6 Prado, it's either remap or Unichip. And if it's Unichip, only we can do it. We've done several already. 21 up V6 Prados. They went to everybody and all the shops in the country said nobody can remap it. So they only come to us. I've been dreaming not in my head like I've seen it a life of We're done with our ECU remap and these are the results. So this red line is stock. So it's a 188 horse at 5,800 RPM. So that's peak power. And then this green line is after remapping. So from, so from let's put it at 190, then we end up at 230. So we get a 40 horse increase here at 58 RPM. At 2,200 RPM, we get you know, this is about 70 to 100. So it's about 30 horse. It's around eight that's about 90 to 125 it's also about 30 horse 30 horse 20 horse 30 35 40 horse so average wise we're looking at 30 to 35 horses total average throughout the entire rpm band same thing with torque we went from 260 to 325 so it's about 60 newton meters more uh, if you average this entire thing out you're looking at about 45, 55 newton meters total. And like I mentioned a while ago, the delay is gone. You should see slightly better mileage, uh, usually 8 to 10% because 
the reason that happens is you don't have to step on the pedal as much anymore to get the speed that you want. So less pedal equals less consumption. Because again, most of you guys don't seem to realize you never drive your car at full power. 99% of the time, you're only doing 30% of what the engine is capable of. Uh, out of 100 people, I ask you how many times have you brought your car to red light, 99 of them said never. <laughs> Maximum power is made at red line, which is 5,800. So if you're nowhere near that, don't worry. There's no effect in engine longevity whatsoever because, again, you're not racing the engine and you're not at maximum power all the time. In fact, probably for the life of the normal street car, you're at full throttle maybe, what, 0.1% of the entire time. <laughs> and that's when you're just overtaking NLEX and then after you've hit 200, you back off and say, ooh, that was fun. <laughs>